Hey everyone, I'm ZSH Plays. Welcome back to Tekton Z. Look at this view. I don't normally show you what I'm building at the start of the episode, but I like this one so much I had to give you a sneak peek. I think it's my favourite habitat in the zoo, and we're going to jump in and build it right now. So the build that we are creating today is based on one of the most amazing pieces of architecture the zoo world has ever seen, uh, in my opinion. Um, if you were lucky enough to go to the Kansas City Zoo any time between uh, when it was built up until it was torn down in 2015, uh, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It is the old Great Ape House. It's an absolutely ludicrous <laughs> building. Uh, a piece of modernist madness which uh, is exactly what we like in this series um, it was built back in the 1960s uh, 1966 it opened and it is just like I say it's the most amazing architecture it looks like it should be in tomorrow land at, uh, at Disneyland it's a really futurist design all soaring white concrete and uh, right up my streets as you can imagine and one of my favorite things to do in this sea as you know and what we like to do we've done quite a few times before is take a classic piece of zoo architecture uh, and update it for modern times um, so despite its incredible uh, looks which we're just starting to put together here this was as usual an absolutely terrible habitat for animals <laughs> Um, it is a, a giant cylinder, uh, 17 meters tall, with the giant glass tower as the centerpiece, which from, from what I can gather was basically just there to let lots of light in and look very cool. Um, the animals didn't really have much to do with it. There was no uh, sort of part of the habitat that they could actually access in there. Might have been a little bit, um, I've not been able to find that out yet in my uh, researches, but principally it was there to look cool. And then the animals were based in various sort of glass prisons um, around the central tower. So it is a pretty big build. Uh, this is pretty much to scale what I'm building here. But as big as it was, bearing in mind that the verticality of it was not utilized by the animals, this one building split into multiple habitats contained two gorillas, two orangutans, five chimps, seven gibbons, and they lobbed a few birds in as well. <laughs> um, I mean, the mind boggles. It was, uh, by all accounts, pretty terrible for the animals. I, um, I wasn't lucky enough to see it myself before it was torn down, um, which for understandable reasons they did uh, about six years ago but um, not the best for the animals. So as usual, what I'm gonna be doing is turning this into a really good habitat for different animals. So I've gone with capuchins um, for two reasons. A, they're pretty small, so that automatically gives them a lot more room in this structure. And B, most importantly, because they climb. They spend lots of time up in the trees and the key feature of this building for me is the enormous glass tower in the center of it, which gives a huge amount of space for climbing. Um, I don't really know the ins and outs of why that wasn't utilized in the original build, uh, or maybe it was, and just my research is all wrong, but um, I think I'm right. So yeah, what I'm gonna do is turn the big tower in the center into an enormous climbing space, and that also gives uh, a feature that I really want, which to a certain extent we achieved in the jungle with the red rough lemurs which is to be able to see them climbing from outside the habitat um, you can very occasionally see the lemurs running um, across the vines uh, stood outside the jungle but i want to do that uh, better basically with uh, with this enclosure so these are the giant um, supports that go around the building and, and make it look even cooler. This took a while to work out how to do, but um, I used the long plaster pieces to get the shape of it and then filled in the gaps with um, plaster panels. And then this shape is just copied and rotated around the rest of the habitat. And this habitat is gonna be the beginning of a brand new area in the zoo. 
So it originally held, you know, gorillas, the great apes, and that is something that is completely lacking in Tecton at the moment. We don't have any apes. Uh, in fact, until we have these capuchins, the only um, primates that we have are the, the two species of lemur. So I think it would be really good to get a primate area in here. I did have a couple of ideas. I mean, basically this enclosure is so huge that it doesn't really work on its own. You can't just lob this into the middle of the zoo and leave it there. It sort of needs to be the focal point of something. So I had a couple of ideas for what area could go around it. Once I knew that I was gonna put capuchins in it, really either to do a America's area, uh, which would give a lot of freedom in terms of being able to use animals from the cold wastes of northern Canada all the way down to Brazil and Argentina. Gives you a lot of scope in what sort of animals that you can put in there. The second idea, and this is the one that I am going to go with, uh, unless you guys think uh, the Americas is a much better idea, in which case let me know in the comments um, and I will take that on board. But at the moment my idea, seeing as we don't have any primates, is to use this as the centerpiece of a primates exhibit. Uh, another thing that I wanted to achieve with the Tecton jungle area that I sort of achieved, but I'm not completely happy with it, was the idea of these giant modernist structures looming up out of the jungle. And um, because I went with much more naturalistic enclosures in there, and I ended up using sort of modernist elements rather than big modernist buildings, I didn't really achieve what I wanted to. I'm sort of happy with each individual habitat in there. I think the sun bears is really cool. I love the red rough lemurs, the way that works. Um, pygmy hippos, waterfall and stuff is good. Um, the central enclosure, I was a bit uh, a bit disappointed with, to be brutally honest. Um, I'm looking at the viewing figures. Uh, maybe you guys were as well. <laughs> but um, I wanna do that again and achieve it properly this time and if you want a big modernist building looming out of a tree filled foresty jungly area then um, this pretty much fits the uh, description about as well as any could do uh, it's huge it's a, a giant tower it looks amazing uh, i definitely think this is a this is the one to do that with so what i want to do is have gorillas and chimps in habitats that you walk through to get to this, which will be the focal point at the end. Uh, obviously when I say walk through them, <laughs> they're not gonna be walk through habitats, that would be insane. You will walk through, a, through an area with um, hidden barriers, maybe some Hagen back style panoramas, etc. So you really feel like you're in there with them and then coming out of the jungle will be this giant tower. So that is my idea, because I really do think we need some apes in the zoo. Um, it'll just be chimps and gorillas, because the orangs in this zoo, uh, they just made the gorillas red, uh, and they just sit around on the floor all day, acting um, about as much like a chimp as they do a chipmunk. So I don't really want to put them in the zoo. Um, so those are the animals that we will have. Uh, let me know in the comments if you think that's a good idea. Um, and that will be the, uh, the next phase of this area. So just putting the barriers in here, they're all null barriers, uh, scenery pieces will keep the animals in. Uh, so let's talk a bit about how this is actually gonna work. So the, the big central area that you can see, the glass tower, that is gonna be their main area. Uh, and it is essentially an outdoor area. There is a roof, uh, but the roof is mesh, which we will get to in a second. This is the area for the guests, where they'll be able to stand and watch the monkeys. And we'll fill this in with various education items, uh, benches, etc. in a second. Let's look at the roof now. So it's just a mesh roof, so they're essentially outside, but it's also gonna have a retractable roof, which I am implying here, which will come across the top during winter to keep the monkeys warm and any particularly bad weather anything like that to keep the uh, the temperature the way they would like it so this is based on a retractable roof design that is used in zoos quite a lot i want it to be open 
so I'm not actually going to build the uh, the retractable part uh, if you see what I mean just building the the, the housing for it uh, and then we'll mesh across the rest so that the if any monkeys manage to somehow climb up the glass or jump <laughs> an insanely high amount or whatever uh, they won't be able to get out and then climbing structures are going to be trees so it's going to be all natural um, I figure they'd be sort of transplanted here um, and they'll have enormous amounts of natural light because there's no hard roof other than in winter uh, temperature controlled environment so we can get some tropical trees in I'm using the Cecropia trees mainly mainly because um, in terms of trees that the capuchins will be happy with and trees that are tall enough to achieve the effect of being able to see the capuchins from outside the enclosure when they're running around in them there's very few trees that I could choose from and then one of my favorite activities attempting to place these vines <laughs> um, if you've tried to use them they are not easy um, what I found is if you get them sort of roughly where you want them to go uh, and then actually move the trees that is the easiest way to get them to join up but I needed um, a lot of very long vines right up adjoining the tops of the trees so that the monkeys would have a lot of space to run around in so you can see them and I've also put enrichment items into the trees to encourage them up here more often. I'm using the mirror mobile because it fits nicely into the tree and it's pretty subtle. It just looks like there's some uh, mirrors hanging in the tree because the trunk covers up the uh, the pole that it's on. Um, I don't, I haven't seen them use them because presumably there's no room for them to be for the animations to trigger, but they do seem to spend by Planet Zoo standards um, a lot of time climbing so I think they work but um, I'm not a hundred percent sure but they certainly spend a decent amount of time running up around those vines which looks amazing from outside the habitat and obviously you can look up and see them when you're inside the habitat as well uh, so whether they're actually encouraging them up there or not I think they are and then just covering up uh, one of the forage feeders which we like to do uh, so it looks pretty natural in there and then I've experimented with placing one of the other feeders on top of the pole so that the monkeys have to climb up to get to it which I think looks pretty cool this is their main indoor area so this is um, a sort of a space for privacy and a space if it gets really cold where the heating is going to be more effective in this enclosed space and I'm just trying to make it look like the absolute carnage that the inside of any sort of monkey enclosure always looks like. They're always so messy because they will just um, put anything to pieces. The keyboard as well, I absolutely love. love the animations when they're playing away on the keyboard. I think that works best for the capuchins, even better than it does for the lemurs. I wanted this room here to have a sort of a jungle feel to it to simulate the natural environment. So I'm using what is fast becoming one of my favorite pieces in the game, which is the new beaver enrichment pool. It is so versatile. Um, I, in fact, I used it in the last episode to simulate a rock pool for the sea lions. Now it is a sort of jungle pool for the capuchins. Um, I guess it's really for, more for the guests than for the capuchins because this is in the guest area. But when it's all covered up with rock work, um, it looks really good. Um, I covered up the, um, I think in the sea lines, I covered up the white birch tree that doesn't really give you that beachy feel with some reeds. And here I'm going to use a lobster claw or two lobster claws actually to cover it up to retain the, uh, the tropical vibe and some misters. And it really sort of sells the, sells the effect, I think. Now, while I finish that off, Last episode, we hit a big milestone. We got 500 subscribers. And as of when I'm recording this, we have just over 600. So our little community is getting bigger. So I thought I would ask you guys for what you would like on the channel in future. Obviously, while we're building Tecton, this will always be my main priority until this zoo is finished. There'll always be a Tecton episode every other Saturday sometimes more often than that when I can manage it. And then we have Planet Wild, which I started a while ago. I think we've done three episodes of that. Lots of Pomoja Wildlife Park videos as well. We are within hours of finishing that zoo. So there's gonna be one or possibly two more episodes of that on the channel. And then when that is all complete, 
I'll have a bit more time to start making some other videos. So what would you guys like to see? Is there any types of videos, any ideas in terms of different types of videos that you'd like to see me make? Let me know in the comments and I'll go through your ideas. I've already had a couple of people ask me to make a video on my design process and how I come up with these builds and videos on custom billboards and how I do those. But anyway, let me know if there's anything you'd like to see on the channel in future. Uh, we're just adding the final few details into the build here and I will leave you with the cinematics of possibly my favorite habitat in um, Tecton. Let me know what you think of it, and thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Bye.